you must be wondering what is there to learn in using a mouse. But trust me, there is so much we can do with the mouse. But the first question I want to address is why do we use a mouse in the first place? And that's an important question because we are all working from home, probably on a laptop. And most laptops have a touchpad. And because they have a touchpad, we feel that there is no need to use a mouse. And that's natural, but I strongly suggest, even if you have a touchpad, it's very important to use a mouse. Which mouse doesn't matter? It's the cheapest mouse, just two buttons and a wheel, absolutely good enough. Mouse can be a cheap thing or a very costly thing. But having a mouse of any sort is absolutely important and you must use it because otherwise in a touchpad when we are doing like this all the time you are going to get arthritis in the thumb joints very very soon. By using mouse we delay that arthritis. Now with mouse I am assuming you don't have an exotic mouse you just have a two button mouse and a wheel scroll wheel. With that, how much more can we do? We are going to see lots of examples and this agenda is here. Let's start with the first one. So whenever we have a mouse, anything which is dragged anywhere, generally it is a move operation. You know that, correct? Whenever you drag something, it moves. Yes, we know that. But uh, with control what happens let me show you so this is a shape i press the control key and then drag notice it's a duplication and this works across the board if i had just dragged look at this and if i press control notice there is a plus sign automatically even before i start dragging so this is a copy or duplicate operation the same thing works here in the thumbnail view as well. So let me change the screen. So what am I saying? Here you can actually use control right and press control to see the plus sign and when you do that you are actually duplicating it. Fine. This same thing works on the left side also but now if I press control and try to drag, notice nothing is happening on the thumbnail view on the left side. That's a little weird. So you first start dragging, then press control. Now you can duplicate. This is an exception to the rule, but generally everywhere else you will see this happening. Not just in PowerPoint. For example, I have a tab called transaction. I press control key and drag, it made transaction two. So same concept applies almost everywhere in Windows Office and most other applications which work with Windows. All right, now let's go to the next one. So that's control drag, copy or duplicate. Now there is something called control click. Ah, why would you want to control click? So let's talk about selection. This is very useful in Word. All of us probably know that if you click, the cursor goes there. Nothing great. You know that. What happens if you double click? It selects a word. That also probably you know. Have you ever tried a triple click? Yes, it actually works. So in Word, triple click selects the whole paragraph. Very nice. But notice that here there is a sentence. This is a sentence. This is the second sentence and so on. There are three sentences in this paragraph. If you count lines, there is one, two, three, four, five. There are five lines, but three sentences. So single click, move the cursor, double click, select word, triple click, select paragraph. But if you want to select a proper sentence, what do you do? That's control click. It understands what's a sentence is. So notice it started correctly, ended correctly. And just to confuse it, I'm going to put a semicolon there so that this is a continuation of the sentence now. So now control click, 
will select it nicely. So that's control click. Now, another very, very useful thing is they often we do drag drop. All the time we are doing drag and drop. Now, if you want to change the way drag drop works, then you do right drag drop. What do I mean by that? So let's see this. I have one folder here and one folder here. So I have two folders which are on different drives. So this is on D colon, this is on C colon. Now, if I drag something and drop it here, what is it going to do? It's going to copy. And that's the default behavior when you're dragging and dropping across two different drives. But what if I wanted to move it? Now, another common problem. I tried to start the drag and drop operation and just before dragging, I realized, oh, this is copy. Actually, I wanted to move. And now you're in a quandary, you're stuck. You don't know what to do. So that's the time you press escape. So that operation gets canceled. That's a good use of escape. If you are hanging halfway through and drag drop, press escape. But now if I want to change the behavior, what do I do? Notice the behavior is saying it's copy. Now if I press control, nothing is going to happen because I have already started the process. Okay. So that's where right drag drop comes into picture. What does that mean? Assuming you are a right handed person, when you are dragging something, dragging an object or folder or file, you are pressing the left mouse button, keeping it pressed and then dragging. Instead of pressing the left mouse button, you press the right mouse button and then notice what happens. It won't do anything. It will actually show you more options. Yeah, sorry, I am sharing the screen. Forgot to share the screen, sorry. Okay, so let me repeat the word part. So what was I showing in word? Double click is select word. Triple click is select paragraph and control click is select sentence. This is control click. Yeah, so that's that part. Now I told you that duplicate is control and drag. And the next thing I'm trying to show you is right drag. So for right drag, what is our example? Again, I will share the screen. So I have two folders and from one folder, I'm trying to copy something to the other folder. These are C colon and D colon. So that if I drag drop like this, it's going to be copy by default. If it is the same drive, then it is move by default. Now, what do I do? First of all, if you want to cancel a drag drop operation, just press escape. But now, instead of pressing the left mouse button while dragging, if I press the right mouse button while dragging, notice what happens. I am leaving the button now. It won't copy. It won't move. Nothing. It will just show you an option, set of options. You'll notice that one of the options is bold. That is the default option. That is the option which automatically happens when you do a regular drag drop using the left mouse button. So right drag drop gives you more options. It's a very, very useful thing. Let me give you another example of that in Outlook. So in Outlook, what happens? I have a mail and I want to convert it to task. So I can drag the mail and drop it on the task folder. That will become a task, but it won't ask me. It will just copy it. So you know what to do. Right drag drop on the task. It will ask you, do you want to move or copy? And that's the important thing, move or copy. So if you want to move, a mail and convert it to a task, what do you do? You drag it from inbox using right mouse button, drop it on the task icon, then it will give you the options. Do you want to copy it just like that or do you want to copy it with attachment or you want to move it with attachment? A third option is better. 
So that's right drag drop. Now another thing which is very useful is constraint. What do I mean by that? So let's say this, the, there are three shapes and they are now properly aligned. You can see the red lines which are appearing there. These are properly aligned. Fine. Now, if I want uh, to move this on the right side, the moment I start moving, my mouse may change or apart from moving. So if I want to change the or rather move from here to here, what happened? I want to move it horizontally, but I'm not very precise. Mouse is not a precise instrument. So it's going to move vertically as well. So I want to constrain it while moving in the direction I choose. So press shift key and drag. Now even if you try to move the mouse up or down, it's not going to go. Same way, if I want to move this or this up, uh, upstairs, above, press shift key and start moving up. Now it will constrain in that direction. So basically, shift is the constraint key. All right, so that's the next one. Shift drag is constraint. Now shift draw is another very useful thing. Probably I've shown it before, but let me show you again. How do you draw perfect shapes? Take any shape, press shift key while drawing. Perfect square, perfect circle, isosceles triangle and so on. So all shapes are perfect when you drag. Now while we are there, another very useful thing. Sometimes what happens, I want something to be properly aligned center. So what do I do? I try to do it like this and hopefully I will center it properly. Let me see. Ah, okay, now it's centered properly. But then I feel like increasing its size. And the moment I increase its size, I'm going to do it from either sides or corner. Sides is a bad idea because it's going to distort it. Corner is good, but corner retains the proportions, but it's still going to go off-centered. So if I want to keep it in the center and increase its size, press Control key and drag from corner. And now I want to also constrain the shape. So shift control and drag from corner is a very good idea. So center is not moving, it is resizing and in proportion. So shift control, drag from corner. Very nice, very useful. Done. Now drag select. What does that mean? If I have multiple shapes and I want to select them, how do I exactly do that? Just to complicate matters, what I'm going to do is duplicate these and just randomly put them somewhere. Now let's say for whatever reason, I want to select only these two and I'll just color them differently. Only the orange ones I want to do. So I have multiple shapes and I want to select only the orange ones. How do I do that? Of course I can click and shift click, that's okay. But suppose there are five of them, I don't want to click five times. So this is another very useful thing go outside where there is nothing. So if you click, there is no object here. And from outside, select. Draw an imaginary rectangle. Now look at the shapes. The shapes which are completely inside this drawn rectangle will select. Which are partially out will not get selected. Very nice. Now suppose I do that. And now I do this way. So some more will get selected. And now let's say this one, I want to deselect. No problem, now I press control. Now I press control and again do this. So it got deselected. So shift control, all these work in unison. So again, draw a rectangle outside. Everything inside which completely occupies the rectangle will get selected. Now if I want to deselect some of them, press control key, again draw an imaginary rectangle. Now what is completely inside will get deselected. Very useful. Now another very nice thing. This is a presentation. 
So let me go to the PPT and show you. This is the standard PPT I'm showing you. Now I want a laser pointer. What should I do? Of course, I can right click, go to screen and then pointer options, laser pointer. But that's too much of effort. So press control key and drag mouse. This becomes a laser pointer. Now you are dragging the mouse. You are not keeping the control key pressed. So if I just move the mouse, the cursor will move. If I press control and start moving the mouse, now I release the control key after the pointer changes to laser pointer. That's it. So this is a very useful thing, laser pointer. Now let's talk about control scroll. What is control scroll? Control scroll is zoom generally. You can change that in settings. So this is a document. Normal scroll wheel will just scroll vertically. Control scroll will zoom in and zoom out. What will it zoom in and zoom out? The document, not the user interface. Another use for the wheel, if you are, so sorry, normal scroll wheel is scroll and control scroll is zoom in, zoom out. Now, this can be changed. Some people get confused with this. So if you go to options, there is an option called scroll with mouse wheel in the tools options. Let me see where that is. I think it's in. There is an option whether with the scroll wheel you want to zoom in and zoom out or you want to scroll. So that setting is generally a toggle. I can't remember. It is in advance somewhere. It's there in all office tools. The other use of mouse wheel is if, if the cursor is in the menu, then if you use the mouse wheel, notice what's happening right now. It's home tab. If I move the scroll wheel, it's going design, layout, references, mailing, and so on. So that's another very nice use of scroll wheel. Quickly navigate between menus. Nice. And then triple click I've already covered. There's another very interesting thing called slow double click. So sh let me show you that. That's relevant in Excel. Why would I want to do slow double click? You know what is double click. For example, this is a chart and on the chart, if I double click, what is going to happen is going to open the format data series option. Fine. But suppose I want to change the color of this green one. Now, if I select what happened, the entire series got selected. Now, if I try to change the color of something, it's going to change it for everyone. I don't want that. What do I want? I want only the green one to be selected. How do I do that? Slow double click. What does that mean? That means I click once. It selects the whole series. Then I take a pause. Then I click again. Now only this one got selected. That's called slow double click. This is specifically for selecting a data point in a series in chart. And now if I change the color, only this color will change. Slow double click. And uh, finally, we will see selection shift click. What does that mean? That you probably already know control click and shift click. But just for demo purpose, I want to select this and then press control then select this, then press control, then select this. And after doing this, if you wanted to unselect some of the selected ones, now what do you do? Now what do you do? Notice again, shift, control, control, control. So that's another U. Select as usual, normal selection, then control and select, control and select 
and now I want to unselect something which is already selected no problem and within this if I want to do a contiguous selection shift and control it can get confusing but bottom line just try both these keys in various ways it will give you very good options another very useful thing which people don't know is let's say I have lots of data and I want to select the first column if it's a table it's very easy if it is not a table it's a little difficult why is it difficult I'm just going to show the problem if there were gaps then shift and down arrow normal shortcuts don't work so if it was a table you would have to or rather it for not a table you will have to scroll 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 to select that's a bad idea so how do you select properly the simplest thing is to create a table and then how does it help you notice many people select columns like this so look at the mouse cursor this cursor means selection this means change the width this means something to do with row this means selection this type of cursor means typing so looking at the mouse cursor we can learn a lot so now what does this cursor mean something to do with the column but if you select this column and make something bold or whatever is going to change it for 1 million rows which is a bad idea so what should you do look at the mouse cursor this is a table in Excel this is the down arrow cursor yes I'm going to zoom in now the cursor becomes standard cursor because it's going to select now but now if I continue coming down notice it again becomes a selection cursor this is how you select the entire column but suppose you don't have this as a table and then you have gaps and then you want to select from beginning to end and you don't want to drag 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 what do you do so click on the first cell don't select just click on the first cell then look at the scroll bar why do you look at the scroll bar because scroll bar tells you where is the data ending so drag the scroll bar to the bottom and then scroll a little notice the data ended I have not selected but I know in this column city my cursor is there so now if you press shift and click it's going to select so remember that if you are at the beginning and then you move to the destination somehow and then press shift click then anything in between will get selected and this kind of thing is very useful for lengthy data where you have a long description and I want to select something so I started selecting something here and then I go down and I say shift click everything in between should get selected so that's how this is very very useful so with that I'm going to end today's session thank you for your patience